everybody, and welcome to the home of the Myers Touch. I'm Helena Myers, I'm one of the directors here of the Myers Touch, and with me tonight is Emma R. Cole, a florist and aromatherapist. And we're really excited to um, present to you one of our design talks that we haven't ever done before, and uh, because we wanted to do something with a seasonal theme and slightly a little bit of a difference. Normally, for those of you who have joined me before on a design talk, you'll know that I'm sat behind a computer, perhaps um, presenting a PowerPoint with some beautiful kitchens to you. But tonight, we thought we'd uh, invite you to just enter the studio with us and to do a bit of a walk around. So please bear with us if we've got a wobbly camera or if the sound quality goes a little bit, because um, this is our first time in doing something like this, and we really wanted to make it as interactive as we could do for you. Um, we would love for you to be able to see the lights and hear the sounds uh, and even smell some of the smells that we're going to smell tonight. Um, obviously, we're going to do what we can over digital to, be, to bring to you an essence of uh, the season that we're in. And also to talk to you about some of the ideas we have about how to integrate the different seasons of the year into your home environment um, and to really go with nature, go with the flow and make what's going on outside part of your lives in the season that we're in. So really excited to have uh, Emma with us. Um, Emma, um, being a florist, you've been working with plants and nature and loving the planet for quite some time, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I trained as an aromatherapist in 1995 at Tisserand and I've been practicing aromatherapy since then. And then I've moved into floristry in the last few years and um, combining the two is particularly nice for me to do this evening. Thank you for inviting me along. Oh, you're really yeah. welcome. And um, I, I, I would just like to recommend to you to use the chat button while we're... Um, giving some information tonight because we've got one of our interior designers, Jay, who's there a few tips at the ready to answer any questions behind the scenes. Obviously, we can't see those questions ourselves, so we can't redirect our talk to specifically answer the questions, but Jay will be there doing um, everything she can to assist you, whether it's on a project-related um, theme or whether it's a seasonal-related theme, so you're more than welcome to do that. And of course, you can phone in at any time during the working hours. So, uh, as you are, will be completely aware, we're in a, an autumnal season at the moment, and most of us are just beginning to think about what might be happening in that six weeks' time with the C word that we don't like to use too soon, but Christmas will be upon us quite quickly. And, and so we thought we would enable you to see some really simple ways and effective ways that you can turn your kitchen living environment into a wonderful place to both celebrate and savour the sights and sounds of the season. Um, Emma and I are going to be uh, wandering around the studio and we're going to do some um, practical elements together with some ideas for what you could do in, in a long-term arrangement for your kitchen living spaces. So we're going to be both looking at the here and now and for those of you who haven't started on a kitchen project yet, also going to be weaving in some ideas for consideration for you as to how to future proof your kitchen living spaces so that when it comes to these very busy seasons uh, your kitchen is more than capable uh, of uh, dealing with all the high demands. So I'd first like to just show you if you can see just a little setting that we've set up. We're actually sat at a, a lowered table in one of our kitchen displays within our studio. And this table is really just for three people. It's quite an intimate setting. I like to think of it as like a breakfast table. So often with our large cavernous living spaces these days, um, one of the dangers we have is getting lost in those spaces and especially when it comes to intimate dining or when we have just a one friend round. We don't want to be sitting at a huge table which is you know ready for 12 people when there's just the two of us or we're just sharing a glass of wine with a friend. So we really need to create in our kitchen spaces uh, places where two people can feel comfortable 
Uh, and one of the ways we can do that is by creating, for example, a little lowered table just off of the main kitchen island if you have a big enough space. In this um, situation, we've actually even got a pop-up television that we can raise uh, up and down at the end of our little table. So that would be perfect for say, breakfast time TV or just catching up on the news while you were doing cooking breakfast for the kids, for example. And the separation of the planters also enables us to feel that we're in quite a little um, special space. We've laid the table out using lots of metallics and textured things because one of the things that's really useful to do when you have a more intimate dining arrangement is to start layering things up. So, for example, most of you will know about charger plates, and it's always really good to have charge, uh, a whole, you know, I have a set of 12 charger plates uh, in my home already. Every, every occasion, birthdays, Christmases, etc., they come out, and then the china can get laid up. And already the setting uh, works very well when you've got uh, guests around for dining. If you are able to get um, cutlery, which um, is able to match anything, you know, like we've got uh, the gold effect here, rather than always the stainless steel, then it does add a lot of warmth to the table. And of course, that goes really well with a gold charger plate. And um, picking up on that, you could use items like this um, cinnamon stick, which has been frosted. Uh, and again, dip a little bit of gold and just a few snowflakes. And it's amazing how just those simple things uh, set on the table before you even come into a meal can excite the person who's, who's coming for a meal and make it feel really interesting already. So, you know, um, set your tables up in advance, do leave it to the last moment and, and make sure you add lots of little embellishments which will work and throw the light around. Emma has got quite a few different things to show you tonight. So Emma, do you want to talk about what we're going to do yes. to straight into them? Well, what I've done, because I know that Christmas is quite busy for most people, so I've put together just a few ideas which are all really quick, simple, not a huge amount of floristry skill required, to be honest, but just something that anybody could do in a few seconds, just to add a little bit of Christmas atmosphere to the kitchen, but without having to spend much time on it. Wonderful. OK, I'm sure you're all waiting to see something. So let's get started. Emma. Sure, let's show you the first one. Yes, please. <coughs> so the first one, I've taken a lovely big <coughs> glass, which I think is perfect for a gin and tonic. But if you can spare the glass, then this is a very quick and easy idea. Simply get a good piece of holly with a few berries on it, pop it down into the glass. And then all you're going to do is get your floating candle, which you're gonna pop on top. And you can light that. Okay, yep. And you can do as many of those as you want and just stop them around the kitchen or have them down the table. But at the moment, the hedgerow is absolutely stacked full of berries. Everywhere you look is berries. So it's a really quick and easy one to do. It took a few I seconds. I love that. That's so simple. It is sweet, isn't it? The effect of the water seems to magnify exactly. that body. It's really lovely. I've been noticing that this year there are so many more berries than normal. Exactly. And uh, that's beautiful. So there are, there are dark berries, orangey berries. You've got obviously traditional holly. You could do a bit of mistletoe in there. You can put anything you like. Now, so, how long would something like that last? Obviously not the candle will have a time, but oh, the holly. Yeah, done. it's happy. It's very happy in there. It'll just keep on going. Fantastic. So I love that idea that Emma's brought, um, and I love the use of the wine glass as well. 
On the subject of wine, one of the things which really does create that hospitality in your home is to create a drinks area. And perhaps I can show you over to what I've set up earlier in the studio as a welcome drinks area on our buffet over here. Um, I always find that when, uh, when I have guests arriving um, and I'm busy in the kitchen, uh, it's, it's really nice if guests can help themselves to the drinks or I can assign perhaps one of my children um, to do drinks on my behalf. That keeps people out of my way while I'm preparing food, but it also kind of has this very welcome feel. People know where to go. The thing about your home is you know the flow of your own home, but when you're inviting guests in, they're always asking the psychological question, where should I go? What what flow should I take? Which steps can I go over here? And then the lovely buffet or reception area just provides that stopping place for people. And um, if you don't happen to have an arrangement like this, most of us have got a sidewalk somewhere or an area perhaps in the hallway. Um, set up the glasses in advance so that people don't have to go rummaging around inside your cupboards to find them. And make sure obviously you've got them in different shapes and sizes according to the drinks that you've got. I always think that um, having drinks out, uh, liquors especially, um, as an arrangement and having those bottles out on the side is very welcoming at Christmas. And of course, you can always take some empty glasses or some old wine bottles and put the um, lights inside. Uh, and that just brings a lovely glow into this area. The other thing I would mention about like a drinks area is that um, if you happen to be in a situation where you have a very large table, but very few guests, and you don't have the luxury of having a second small table, why not turn half of that larger table into the drinks area, cordon it off, um, perhaps set a table runner or a nice table feature and then on one side set the drinks up to be a really beautiful drinks area and on the other side a place setting. This will just give your guests a sense of feeling um, enclosed in the area and you won't be too lost. So just a nice tip if you have just a one large table and you want to create something a little bit more intimate. So let's go back to Emma, see what else she has to offer us. Yes, so another one using glasses. These are really good with um, wine glasses. I've got lovely sort of crystal stars across them. So what I'm going to do with these ones, obviously you might prefer to be drinking out of the wine glasses. If you can spare a few, <laughs> this is a really quick and easy one again. So we're literally going to turn them upside down with a bit of poly inside. I'm showing you this one. And these are really effective in a line down a table. If you've got a nice table and just and length. And then again, we're just going to put a little candle on top. So get these to light themselves. Okay, presto, your candle holder appears. It's lovely. It's <laughs> been all right. And there you go. That's wonderful. Really love the title. So that can make a great. Um, uh, hallway arrangement or yeah. anywhere really a table and obviously if you've got a nice long space you can stretch them out can't you? exactly mm -hmm. it's just very effective but very mm -hmm. simple and very quick so if you're busy doing the dinner you haven't got time to do a big decoration you can just do that in a few seconds amazing i think one of the things i really like about um being hospitable is that welcome um, and maybe even starting that on the driveway before people even come up to your home. Um, 
uh, obviously we like to have our lights on and all of our lights set and it's really important if you're doing a project that you pay really careful consideration to the lighting because uh, it's often too late afterwards. You need to be able to have dimmable lights. Uh, soft lighting is great. Uh, these days you can have lighting which goes from core to wall so you can really uh, tune in to what atmosphere you want to create. Uh, but obviously with a beautiful candle like this, like this, it's nice to have soft accents in the room so that they don't overpower the candles. And so that you can dim down the lights around it and let the candles really do their shining. But starting off by having perhaps a candle lit pathway um, and then going into uh, your hallway with again, uh, more soft lighting, leading people gently into the area you want them to go is a lovely idea. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So having lights wrapped around a little tree, little sort of fairy lights wrapped around sort of draws you in towards the entrance. Yes, that's a, another super idea. We love using lights in different ways. And if you just look at the studio here, you can see some of the light strips that we've chosen to use um, for our celebrations this year. Um, many of you will either be planning or have already got um, large patio doors or extensions or mural properties with an awful lot of glass, perhaps even the whole walls of glass. Um, and of course, we absolutely love that. We actually do a design uh, talk on indoor-outdoor kitchens, which is obviously very appropriate for the summer months. In the winter months, if you're not careful and it hasn't been really thought through, you can end up with just this blackness outside. Uh, and of course, then you don't want to be looking out onto just a, a black window. Uh, so there's two things that you can really do to redress this. And the first is by using lights such as these, which just totally takes away from the back and now creates a drama in your kitchen or in your living area. And the other is to think about the lighting of the garden itself so that you don't have lights on the window, but the illuminations are outside. Maybe uh, you know, a lit up rain reindeer or maybe just a beautiful tree that you want to you know, pick out uh, specifically. And uh, what that can do is that can create that kind of, uh, the eye goes beyond the darkness of the window into the garden uh, and from there you have a softer scene and you also don't feel like you're being overlooked while you're working in the kitchen. So do play around with lights. When you uh, see around in the studio, you can see the different ways that we've created uh, atmospheres with lights. On this intimate dining space that we have here, we've pulled the lights down very low over the table to create pools of light onto the table. Um, it's not task lighting, so you wouldn't want to be doing anything, um, you know, to, uh, you know, like reading, for example, under here, but it's really welcoming to draw light down close onto the table. Um, and so if you don't already have suspended pendant lights, but you do want to create some of those special spaces for Christmas, then just try using either candles or um, floor lighters. Uh, uh, there's, there's lots of plug-in lights that you can use now to just and take the light off of the ceiling just to bring it down. It's, it's really important to be able to look and see the faces of the people who you're dining with. So this is great for um, any kind of dining arrangement. One of the things that is important to say though is we don't all have the intimate dining, sometimes we're inviting the whole street around, perhaps for neighbours' drinks, um, nibbles at Christmas, and we want to have a totally different flow in our kitchen. So having the right flow in your kitchen is so important to get right at the beginning. Number one, we want to guard the chef's space. Number two, we need intuitively for the people who are coming into our space to know where they are to stay. Um, but number three is we need to have it as flexible as possible. So, for example, we often recommend extendable dining room tables where the leaves can, uh, can be uh, removed for a smaller setting and then increased. Wherever it's really necessary, of course, you may need to move the table to the edge of a room to allow greater flow 
in the room, for example, the parties at Christmas, especially if you want dancing in your kitchen, as some people love to do. And in those cases, it's obviously important that you're not moving a table which has got two beautiful pendant lights, which uh, it then means that space is impossible to use without a table because people are going to bang their heads on them. So you do really have to think adv in advance if you're planning a project. Is my table going to be permanent? Is it going to be extending um, or, or um, movable in any way? And that will really also have an impact on the lighting. So let's go back to Emma and see what else we could do to create a lovely atmosphere. This one is really as simple as you can get. So a large glass filled with water. This is something you might like to sort of put around and about the room. I'm simply dropping in a set of uh, Catonia berries, which yeah. is slightly orangey. Mm. But if you can imagine a few of those around the room, how effective it is. That's, that's beautiful, it's really lovely. And again, you could put a floating candle on top if you wanted. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you could do it in a much different shape. But yeah, I particularly like it in that one. Really lovely. And um, the Catoni Aster, uh, have you taken the leaves off or do they come? Uh, this one, no, this one didn't have many leaves on actually. And I've just cut, as you do with all, all stems that you cut, you cut at an angle um, to maximise surface water intake, although obviously it's got lots of water intake here, but, um, and then just drop it in. And again, it's very happy in the water. It'll stay like that for days. That's really lovely. And this is also perfect, I would say, for an autumnal look as well as yes. a winter look. Um, one of the things I really love to do around the house is change it up. So yeah. I do not like keeping my seasons the same. I, I mean, a static uh, living space to me is not uh, at all what complements my personality, but neither nature. Um, here in Britain, we've got four amazing seasons. And I think we should embrace those for what yeah. they're worth. I mean, you could do blossom in the spring. That would be beautiful. Just a, a string of blossom in there. Wow, I'm happy to just drop it. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yes. What about a magnolia bud? Could we? Yes. Well, they're quite big. Could you have yeah. That one small enough? If you could put it into a smaller glass. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you could do right. anything. So with, with your um, changing seasons, don't forget to take away um, what, what you have had in your room. So the worst kind of scenario is you want to set yourself up for a celebration, for a season, for, a, for Christmas, for example. Um, and you have all these wonderful ideas and you bring them into your room but without taking something away. And what you'll end up with then is clatter and clash. Uh, you know, a clash, clash, not clash. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it may have been that uh, you have, uh, I mean, you might have pictures on the wall, for example. I mean, let me show you something that I do at home, which is not only change um, like flower decorations, but I will also change painting. So for example, I use something like this, which is like a little easel. Um, I love my little easel. And then uh, that, for example, sits on a console in my hallway. And then in autumn times, I find myself a picture. I hope you can see that okay, because I've got cellophane on it still. I um, haven't yet found my frame for that, but beautiful autumnal colors. Um, and that sets my tone for autumn in my hallway. I mix that with perhaps some boards like this. Anything with texture and depth, uh, and just mix up and basically I try to imitate what nature's doing outside and bring some of those colours in and then later on I might change to some take that away in order to put my Christmas tree up or um, fairy lights of some kind or maybe use some you know like apples deep red this one isn't real but um, real apples are just as good, obviously, and just change it into as the season changes and we get the deep greens and the reds. 
and then maybe back round the loop then and uh, back into the spring and then all the summer and then I'm bringing different pictures in different colours this one very much reminds me of the life that uh, spring and summer brings and so I'm changing my pictures and taking some off the wall some off the a-frame and um, pushing them back things like uh, potted plants whether there are real potted plants or whether they're imitation potted and actually it's sometimes a good idea to mix them up um, like the lavender take it away for Christmas um, and then bring it back again in the spring so that not only are you uh, going with the ebb and flow of the seasons but also you're you're inspiring yourself really to live in the moment even you can do that same kind of thing with towels. I do get laughed at a little bit for this in my family, but I do like to switch it up a bit and whatever's going on in the season. So for example, I have my pink towel, which I like to bring out in the summer. And then when we have passed the summer a little bit and we're going into the leaves falling off the trees, I might go into a more mustard. And then towards Christmas, kind of like feeling a little bit in a different kind of mood or am I going to my deep purples? That's just my bit of fun. I mean, honestly, I love um, walking down the house and thinking, hmm, how does inside reflect outside? So these are such different little things which you can do in your home to create atmosphere changes. I'd love to see another of um, this creation. Please. Yes. So you're talking about welcoming people in and lights and wonderful too that is. If you wanted to put a hurricane lamp outside or if you wanted to have uh, something like this inside, this is a really simple, quick and easy one again. Um, there's a little bit of water at the very bottom. And what I've done is to pick this ivy, which is this really pretty dark red which I love. It's got the green through it, but it's great colour. So I'm literally just going to pop that down at the bottom in the water, and then that will keep it going. Let's see if I'm actually get it from there. That will keep it going uh, nice and long, and then just wind it round. Try, if you can, to get the leaves facing out. It's got a slight mind of its own, this one. And then again, let's leave that coming out of the top, it's fine. So again, that's as you were saying, Helena, you're just using, using nature and bringing it inside. Particularly the colour it makes a difference in the green ivy, which is nice. But I think this is so. Um, That's beautiful. Obviously, you've got to keep the leaves away from the candle. Yes. I see you actually put that inside a you know tall book glass vase anyway, so there's that safety from the wind blowing yes. that. Yeah. And there's a little water as you can see just down there, just to keep the ivy moist, and that will keep yeah. it going. Amazing, really lovely. So I hope everybody's getting lots of ideas about what they can do really simply um, to, to make a space, uh, you know, to transform a space very quickly. I mean, the smell as well of the candles, because obviously you can use scented candles, um, it, it's just lovely. And it's all coming and glowing here. Lights are just one of the most special things to use in a home to create an atmosphere really quickly. Um, and different shapes and sizes of vases. I mean, I love, if you look on here, all the glassware and the fact that the light is, is bouncing off glassware. Glass and metals um, are such easy ways to create in, in beautiful ways and uh, glass has the same effect like these were Christmas decorations once used to have little um, 
hoops on the top, you know, and then I bought a pack of like 24 to hang on a Christmas tree. And then I thought, oh, I know, I'll pull the hoops off and I'll just put them like little diamonds around. So I've, I've got some large diamonds and somewhere there's some little diamonds as well. Um, it just kind of uh, gives a little feeling of opulence, especially if you've got a party going or table setting and you want to just add a few little bits and bobs on the table, because what it does is it just causes that light to refract um, over it. And that just um, makes it very pleasant to the eye, I suppose. I also like playing with geometry uh, and different um, shadows. So anyone who's done a design tool, oh, I probably bring shadows. I think about life, and um, you can't uh, find perhaps apart from a talk um, without seeing the shadows that are being. Just think about buying. Uh, uh, Obviously, the better the light is we have to have in we will not get this effect at all. But this worktop is now moving because at any point in the day uh, when the light changes, the worktop will change. And I just think that adds to embellishment. The other thing that I love to use is nuts. Um, nuts are not great for Christmas, but also for autumn. Uh, mix up your nuts with your cinnamon, um, add a few spices, you know, put cloves in there too. Um, anything that's gonna bring that kind of lovely, beautiful uh, smell in. And then of course you can either choose to eat them. So Emma, I'm itching to see what you have. <laughs> yes. I've got one more floral one to show you, and then I can talk about some more therapy if you like. Mm. So this one, if you want something a little bit grand, maybe, for your table. Again, another very, very quick and easy one. This candle can stay still. So I'll do it. It's going to place that over the top like that. Mm -hmm. And then Maybe it's uh, just place a there, maybe put on there. So the ivy just so I should probably pop around the back. There you go. That's a little quick display. <laughs> Didn't take too long. So that would be very effective just on your table. Really sun. Really nice. And so none of these are taking too much space. So even if you've got a small kitchen, you know, even if you've got a small area, like something like this, it looks like you spent hours working on that. <laughs> you just put that together and took well, 20 seconds. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we're all pretty busy, aren't we, in the run up to Christmas? And it's a bit of a head. And then you've got to decorate your kitchen. Yeah. So actually, you can just do some of these really quickly and easily. You can just tick that box done. Yeah, that's really lovely. The aromatherapy. Um, you're talking about scented candles. Obviously, there are so many beautiful scented candles at this time of year. But if you didn't want to buy a scented candle, you wanted something longer lasting, the best thing to do is to use one of these diffusers. Um, I wouldn't, re I wouldn't recommend that you put essential oils direct onto candles because they are flammable, so you, you could get a reaction. But if you wanted something long lasting and inexpensive actually, you just put a few drops of water, a little bit of water in the top, light the candle underneath, and then you can put whatever oils you like in the top. I've got um, here, I've got some cinnamon, some cloves, 
some orange and some pine. But I think what would be nice and quite Christmassy, we're all quite Christmassy, but I think maybe um, some cinnamon and some orange would be really nice because it's it's really warming and obviously very aromatic. Just a few drops. Essential oils are so easy to get a hold of. You can order them online um, or you can buy them in health shops. And this, once it warms up a bit, this will give off such a lovely smell. These oils, as long as you keep them cool, will last a good year or two. So actually it's a really inexpensive way of keeping mm. you know, a Christmas going if you wanted to have Christmas candles through December, because candles do burn through quite quickly. So this is just a, a more cost-effective way. Um, this isn't particularly Christmassy, this diffuser, but you can obviously buy a more Christmassy one. So that would be my suggestion if you want to create that scent through your house and through your kitchen. That's lovely. Even, um, I think they would be good for um, the cocoa if you have guests coming around. Yeah, exactly. We're not using them for sprays or artificial, but we're actually using some beautiful things. And the other thing is, you know, if you're welcoming guests into your house and you, you don't, or, you know, it might be neighbours, etc. they don't know where your light pull is or your light switch. Yes. And there's all that, you know, like, it's dark, where is everything? So having something that's both um, got a beautiful aromatherapy and also it's lit is just rather special, isn't it? Kind of makes yeah. it inviting, even, even the downstairs can't be. And also you could do, it doesn't have to be Christmassy smells, so if you're feeling a bit stressed in the run up to Christmas, you could put some lavender in and that would just mm -hmm. calm it all down. So just inhaling that will help you calm and relax. Just feel a bit calm yeah. about everything. That's lovely. Yeah. No, great, great tips there. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, the, the other thing about, um, uh, I was just reminded of a candle and the aromatherapy is about the warming jewel uh, and the use of the warming jewels at Christmas. So, for those of you who uh, have got a warming drawer, you'll know how handy it is to have that expansion of your ovens uh, at, at the Christmas season or any celebratory time actually. Um, so if you're planning ahead in your project and you're wondering about how many ovens do I have, what am I going to need, it's funny but the, one of the kind of like uh, biggest problems that people seem to have is how big a turkey can I get into my oven um, and also so do I have enough room to do a, a complete roast uh, when everybody comes? Uh, we talk about the ebb and the flow of the home and that's about the home being suitable for when there's just one or two or three of you and then the home being suitable in the same way when you suddenly have 20 people descend on you. One of the ways that you can do this is have a, a warming drawer where you can keep your plates warm and, and obviously you could keep some food warm or even cook some food in some warming drawers depending on uh, the manufacturer and the model on a deck on work surface like this and um, literally you just scrape it off and you wouldn't see it oven to table where you could take your roast dinner straight out from the oven and put it onto this work surface and there'd be no damage at all likewise um, you know you can do uh, chop things up on it um, and do all the flower arrangements and um, even if you've got some um, you know even if you have to have lilies and you've got the lily uh, you know pollen even that won't stain these worktops so uh, do think durable in your kitchen because honestly we've got so many things to do in our lives at the moment the last thing we want to do is spend hours cleaning and tidying up and uh, you know, these are great and simple and effective ways that we can make use of what's available in the marketplace now. Emma, did you have... Yes, I'll show you one last thing. So just um, for place settings, I mean, you've got your beautiful place settings there. If you wanted to use some plant material, um, what I've done is just to put together a small... Uh, uh, three things, small of the Catania step. And we've got a bit of eucalyptus, which is lovely. I like the contrasting grey and the orange. And then a bit of olive because it is Christmas. So, And then using 
secateurs or these are my favorite snips just cut the stems to the same length and then you just pop them in there it's just a little simple way of doing a little place setting maybe if you wanted to use what's from the garden that's really lovely Yes, because we don't need crackers, do we, so much? I mean, we like to have Christmas crackers, but we end up with all the rubbish and we have to throw it all away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I love seeing nature on my table. I love the way that that looks so inviting, like a little person. It's exactly. so beautiful. Um, and everybody gets to benefit from beauty, that's what I would always say. Um, function is really important. Ergonomics is really important. Yeah, beauty is what makes things seem exactly. Us. Yes, and environmentally, of course, that is very that is very friendly. Yeah. I was going to say as well that if you, I mean, most of what I've used is round and about. People have it in their gardens, or it's in the hedgerows. If you do need to buy material, it's really important when you get it home that you do what's called conditioning, and um, that sounds very complicated and technical, but it's really not. And it's the same also if you get a bunch of flowers given to you. The first thing you should do when you get your flowers or when you get your flowers home is take a good snip on an angle. Oops, sorry about that. And then strip off any leaves. Again, that's a bit tough. That are going to be below the waterline. And then pop them straight into water. And the reason you cut at the angle is because you want to maximise the surface area to absorb water. And the reason you take the leaves off is because if you leave them on, the water will go all murky and it starts quickly to become infected and slimy. And what you should do is do that every couple of days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and also, most importantly, keep them somewhere cool because plants really hate being warm. So if you do get given a beautiful Christmas bouquet, don't put it in the windowsill with the sun on it because it won't thank you. It would much rather be somewhere cool. So that's just a tip if you need to buy any material for any of your little Christmas displays and then obviously keep it in plenty of water. Yes, the last one is to have gone on to picked everything from your garden and then come back in your house and you've left it just too long. So, yes. Um, that's what we... Um, talking about the fire there just made me remember that, you know, um, creating an internal focal, focal uh, point that's an alternative to the external one that we see in the summer is part of the changing seasons. Um, so if you happen to have a fireplace in your room, of course that becomes the perfect place because now instead of looking out, you can look in. And of course, thinking about ahead, about how your sofa is positioned, maybe your sofa was positioned or your seats were positioned to look on the outdoor view. And now you want to look at it internally, maybe it will become something like a fireside chat or a pile of books um, with a, a candle becomes more of a focus so don't forget to turn the outside in turn everything upside down and um, somebody told me a tip once in order to look at your house um, for like the 20th time but for the first time and they said the way to do it to see what other people are seeing is to go around with a mirror in your hand and look at everything backwards because what happens is when your eyes see something in the opposite way it, it looks different to the way you first saw it and then you can easily think oh why why am i putting why is that there or that sticks out or that looks lovely and if you like it in the mirror then it's you looking at it for the first time and thinking that looks nice and this is how other people are going to also see what you're seeing so uh be careful but go walk go for a walk around your house with a mirror walking backwards and seeing what you find and don't forget to take away um, anything which is not seasonal so that it can bring you a surprise when the season does reappear and then you can make the most of this season and all the joys of the season. So I think that's about all we have time for tonight. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this design talk with a total difference. 
Um, uh, please do let us know in the chat box because we always want to um, create design talks which are going to be of use to you. And if you have any ideas, tips, thoughts, we'd love to know. Also, you can email us uh, on our website, and that's www.themyerstouch.co.uk. And leave us a comment there. And also, you can find us on the various platforms such as Pinterest, House, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, and please do talk with us. Talk to one of our designers if you have a project ongoing. Um, and they'll be more than happy to help you. So thank you so much for listening and joining us today. Thank you very much, Emma. I've loved all your tips. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me along. It's been really good fun.